Michelle. I'm a registered dietitian and I'm going to be taking you on a grocery shopping tour soon. Uh, first thing that I wanted to do though is work on my grocery list. Uh, planning ahead, planning your meals for the week, as well as your snacks and any other things you might want to eat or drink can be a good way to prevent impulse buys. Uh, it's also a good way to save money because if you stick to your list and you don't buy some of those other things, uh, you're certainly going to go through the checkout a little bit richer. Uh, we want to start by looking at where to find some recipes. Um, if you've got a recipe box with some of your old favorites in it, those recipes can certainly be modified. So you might take a look at it, see if you can use a lower fat milk, maybe a little bit less cheese, maybe a leaner meat. All of those things are going to save you fat and calories. You're also going to find a lot of recipes in magazines. Um, Canadian magazines that are particularly good for recipes would be ones like Chatelaine, or Canadian Living, uh, they're all going to have the nutrition information as well. So they're going to have the calorie content, the fat content, a uh, little bit of information about the sodium as well. Uh, favorite cookbooks, uh, you can always rely on ones from, uh, again, people like Canadian Living. Um, Anne Lindsay is a, a well-known Canadian cookbook author who puts out some really good stuff as well. So um, find, a, find some good recipes and use them as the basis for your list. Uh, the internet is invaluable because you will again find lots of recipes that are analyzed for uh, fat, calories, and sodium. When I'm planning my list, I do divide it into six sections. So I'm always going to put in the very bottom corner here what I'm going to plan for my evening meals. So Monday through Sunday, what I'm going to plan I uh, will always involve my family. So what are some of their favorite things so that we all have something that we like. And then I'm going to put uh, grain products in one corner my fruit and vegetables in another corner. Then I'm going to put my dairy in the next box, my meat and alternatives, and then finally the bottom corner is where I would put other foods, things that don't necessarily fit into the food groups. I want this corner uh, to be not that full. Ideally we just want a few things from there, such as a good quality non-hydrogenated margarine um, to cook with. So that's what my grocery list is going to look like. So I guess we'll get started. I'm going to start taking a look at some recipes and then we'll get going to the grocery store. A good place to start your grocery shopping tour is in the fresh produce section. So that's where we're going to start. I have my list. I've eaten my breakfast so I'm not shopping on an empty stomach, which is really a good way to make some healthful choices. If you want to just come a little bit further this way, this is a particularly nice display because it does a good job of showing you what kind of leafy greens are available at your local grocery store. Canada's Food Guide does recommend that you choose one green vegetable and one orange vegetable such as carrots every day. Now there are a lot of vegetables and fruits in grocery stores now that you may not be familiar with. Uh, many stores will have a recipe rack or a book with some information about how to prepare some of the vegetables that you might find. So don't be, uh, don't be scared to adventure a little bit and ask questions of some of the staff in the stores. Most grocery stores now carry a wide variety of pre-peeled, pre-washed products. You can see there are a number of different fruits and vegetables here that are already prepared that you really don't have to do a great deal of work. I love the fact that some of them even come with a spoon. So you take that out of the equation entirely. Uh, we did bring a couple vegetables along just to show them as well. Um, sugar snap peas, uh, sweet, crunchy, really flavorful, um, and very low in fat and calories, as well as some green beans that are already pre-washed. So you do have a lot more options than you did even five or six years ago. The most important thing in the bakery section of the store is to choose products that are whole grain or whole wheat. Uh, an example of that if you're getting bored with your regular sandwich is to do something like a whole wheat tortilla, a whole wheat pita bread. I wanted to talk a little bit about portions and how they've changed in the last 20 years or so and the best way to illustrate that is by looking at uh, a few bagels. A uh, regular bagel here, or what we consider a regular bagel, comes in at about 280 calories. The Weight Watchers version here in the middle comes in at about 150, and then we've got the minis on the end here, which come in at 140. You always want to make sure that the portion size you're choosing does meet your nutritional goal. Another thing we need to watch in the bakery area 
is the, the, the deadly and decadent um, high fat, high sugar pastries, cakes, croissants um, that are so delicious but really don't contribute well to our nutrition overall. They should be a once in a while uh, food choice, not an everyday food choice. The deli is going to give you a lot of flavorful lunch options. We just want to make sure that we're choosing meat products that are lower in fat. Uh, just to give you some sense of what's available, we've got some in-house done roasted meats as an option. We also have some lower fat varieties of some of our favorites. Capicola is a spicy Italian meat. Uh, we've got the regular version here, which has a fair amount of marbling, and we also have a leaner version, which would be an acceptable option on a heart healthy or a weight reducing diet. Uh, other options like bologna, pepperoni, salami are going to be the meats that would really be special occasion choices in that they run about 30% fat. As we walk a little bit further along, we're going to come into the cheese section. Uh, we're going to see a lot of examples of lower fat cheeses which are going to be a healthy choice. Very easy actually to choose a, a good quality cheese just by looking at the percent milk fat it contains. This particular option has 12% milk fat. We also have low-fat mozzarella in a block, as well as in a slice, and most grocery stores will now carry a pre-grated version of mozzarella. Keep your eye open for some of your favorites, because often you're going to be able to find low-fat Swiss, you're going to be able to find low-fat cheddar, you're going to be find, able to find quite easily some of your favorite cheese choices in that less than 20% milk fat uh, range. Canada's food guide suggests that we eat fish twice a week. Uh, when we look at best options, the higher fat a fish is, actually the better. We want that good quality omega-3 fat from our fish. Uh, we've got some wild salmon here. You can see the rich, bright red color. It's going to be higher in omega-3 fat than anything we could get in a can or anything that is actually made or produced, I should say, on a farm. As we walk along, we've got a few more options. We have some salmon skewers that have already been flavored and seasoned for us that are a nice way to have a convenient fish meal. And if we walk a little bit further along in the frozen food section, you do have a number of frozen fish options as well. You're going to find frozen cod fillets, frozen blue fish, all kinds of fish in a frozen variety that you just have to thaw and then cook in a heart healthy way. Ideally, we want to cook with a little bit of fat, so we might want to cook uh, in a nonstick pan, we might want to bake it. In the summer, we can certainly throw fish on the barbecue. We also have fish that is, uh, or sorry, shrimp that is already cooked that you can throw into a pizza or use in a quesadilla or throw in a salad. So lots of options that way. Further along, many people do like breaded fish or battered fish. An example of a healthier battered or breaded fish would be this uh, Captain Highliner Healthy Bake. It's a multi-grain breaded fish fillet. Same kind of texture and crunch that you're going to get from a battered option but without the fat and additional calories. We want to take a look at some of the meats that are now commonly available in your grocery store and one that's becoming more common is bison. Uh, you can see when you look at it that it, there really isn't very much visible marbling. So a comparable roast or steak from beef will actually have more fat than a comparable cut from bison. So it is a, an interesting and a healthy choice. When we're looking at beef in general, we want to choose cuts that have less marbling. And just for comparison, we're going to look at eye of round and we're going to look at a rib steak, which is a, a, a common choice, especially in the summer months when we like to barbecue. You can see there's very little marbling here and a great deal here. With pork, there isn't going to be as much marbling to be concerned about, but we do have a lot of fat that we need to trim away. So when we're looking at a pork chop, simply trimming away that outline, that visible fat, is going to make this pork chop a very reasonable portion size, as well as being low in fat and therefore lowering calories. As we come along, we're going to take a look at some ground meat. Uh, regular ground beef runs about 30% fat, and I'm actually not even seeing any here at the grocery store today. It runs about 30% fat, whereas lean runs about 17, extra lean runs 10, and you can see a difference in the color. The redder it is, 
the less white fat there is actually changing the shade, making it more pink. So you want to buy really nice red colored meat, making sure that it is labeled as extra lean. With poultry, as long as it's skinless, it is going to be a low fat choice. Uh, most of the fat in poultry does lie directly underneath the skin, so by getting rid of the skin before we cook it, we're making it a low fat, low calorie choice that's going to work really well with many of the dishes that we commonly make. When we get to the cured meats, uh, most of them are going to be higher fat, higher salt choices. So things we typically would eat in the summer especially would be things like wieners. Uh, we've got garlic coil, which a lot of people like to have a slice of with some cheese and crackers as a snack. Uh, we've got things like bacon as well. Um, very high in fat, very high in salt, really not a good choice in many situations. Uh, the option for bacon would be to try a back bacon instead. Back bacon actually is about 3% fat, has that same kind of salty, smoky flavor without the addition of all the fat and calories. Even buying eggs or choosing your eggs can be confusing at this point in time because there are so many different varieties. Uh, things like Simply Egg Whites and Egg Beaters are almost fat free uh, and still a very good source of protein. Then we have our regular eggs and our omega-3 eggs and our brown eggs. The most important thing to keep in mind is that they are all really good sources of protein uh, and do fit well into a healthy diet. We don't have to spend a lot of time in the milk section just because deciding which milk is best for you from a health standpoint is pretty easy. Uh, we've got skim milk and 1% milk, both of which are lower in calories and lower, than, lower in fat than a regular milk. Uh, both are good choices for a healthy diet. We're going to take a little walk now and take a look at the margarine. We can flavor our food with a small amount of good quality fat. We've got low fat and fat free sour cream as options. In the margin area, we have a bunch of non-hydrogenated soft margarines, which though they have the same amount of fat and calories as butter, are going to be much better for our heart. Uh, this one is a soft, non-hydrogenated, it's made in-house and most grocery stores have one which is going to be a lot less expensive than something like uh, Basel. I did want to point out this base cell product because it is a spray uh, where you can actually spray about five sprays for no fat and no calories and still give your food a buttery flavor, uh, which may make it more appealing and taste better for you. When you're craving something sweet, yogurt can be a good thing to turn to. We have a lot of low fat or fat free yogurts on the market, so ideally you want to find one that has 0% milk fat. This one in particular is sweetened with Splenda, which reduces the calories even further. In a 100 gram portion, which is just a little bit less than half a cup, you're only getting 35 calories and no fat. So a really good way to satisfy that craving for sweetness without uh, wreaking havoc on your healthy diet. We're going to take a look at some ice cream now. Uh, I've got haagen sticky toffee pudding here and I probably don't need to say a whole lot more than that. Most people realize that haagen is going to be high in fat, high in sugar, high in calories. But we're going to compare it just for interest to Skinny Cow. Uh, skinny Cow is 98% fat free. So let's take a quick look at the label. Uh, with the haagen we have 310 calories and 19 grams of fat in a half cup serving. The same size serving with a skinny cow, we're looking at 120 calories and 0.5 grams fat. So really a significant savings and a good way to address that craving for something sweet without uh, having a, a negative impact on a healthy diet. We're going to take a look now at a couple of convenience meals. Uh, as much as we would all like to make healthy meals, um, sometimes if you're in a rush after work, you've had a busy, busy, hectic day, and you're tempted to go through a fast food drive through it might be a better choice to pick up something that is uh, less expensive, a good way to control portions, and certainly fairly convenient. But you do have to look at the nutrition information. With the healthier one, we're looking at 310 calories versus 980. 
Uh, for fat, we've got 7 grams in the healthier choice and 56 grams in the not-so-healthy choice, which is pretty much a full day's intake of fat. Uh, the sodium is something else to consider. Convenience meals are always going to be high in sodium, but when we look at the healthier one, we're at 660 versus 1730 in the, in the less healthy choice. We're going to put these away, and we're going to head over to take a look at the snack foods now. Since we're in this aisle, we're going to take a quick look at some of the snack food options while we're here. I'm just going to pick up a few and we'll walk down and take a look at some of the other choices. Sometimes the best thing you can do with snack foods is keep them out of the house altogether if you know that they are a temptation for you. But if you do feel like you'd like something that is salty and crunchy, uh, sometimes the 100 calorie portion packs are the best way to go. If you are going to have something in the house, um, a number of companies do make baked products now. So we've got baked potato chips, baked tortilla chips. Uh, we've got another brand of baked tortilla chips here at the bottom. An assumption that people commonly make is that if something is marketed as a healthier food, that it, that it is. And sometimes that's not the case. So do make sure you read your labels carefully. We're going to take a look at carbonated beverages because when you're trying to maintain a healthy body weight, uh, they can certainly be a concern. When we look at the nutrition information, one cup of Coke, if you look at the nutrition label here, has 110 calories, which translates into about seven and a half teaspoons of sugar. Uh, there are many people that will drink a, a one liter uh, serving of pop if they go to a place like 7-Eleven. Two liters of pop, that double big gulp, is going to come in at about 60 teaspoons of sugar calories that we really don't need that don't provide anything other than sugar. Whole grain pasta options abound in this day and age. We've got whole wheat macaroni, we've got whole wheat spaghetti. If your kids don't like it for whatever reason, um, Catelli, for example, is putting out a line of pasta products that has all the goodness of fiber um, without tasting like or feeling like a, a high fiber pasta product. For sauces, we want to choose ones that are vegetable based uh, tomato sauces, uh, cream based choices, pestos, and tomato based sauces that contain meat already when you purchase them are not going to be your best options. Brown rice is going to be a really good choice to have along with a healthy stir fry. It's high in fiber, has a great nutty flavor. With that stir fry, full of veggies, very small amount of meat, and a little bit, a little bit of fat to cook it, it's going to be a very nutrient dense, uh, healthy choice as a main meal. Important to keep in mind that a serving of rice is actually only half a cup. We have to be careful with both rice and pasta because we do tend to sometimes get carried away with our portion size. Other options in the rice section and the noodle section for that matter are going to be some of the ones that have sauces or seasoning mixes um, along with them. They tend to be very high in sodium and a great majority of them are also going to be high in fat. So you're far better off choosing a, a plain version and flavoring it, seasoning it yourself. People will often use soups as a convenient meal or else as the basis for a casserole that they prepare. Um, it can be a useful tool, but it can also be a very high fat food item if you're not cautious when you're reading your labels. Want to take a look at Campbell's uh, makes two different New England clam chowders. One that has that big green heart and says healthy request is marketed as one that is lower in fat and lower in sodium. If we look at the nutrition labels, uh, the first version, the Healthy Request, has 110 calories and only one and a half grams of fat, whereas the regular version has 220 calories and 13 grams of fat. So really a significant savings when you purchase a Healthy Request. Do keep in mind that soups are always going to be high in sodium. Even if you are choosing a Healthy Request, which is lower, it still isn't low. Uh, so you want to choose it less frequently, if at all possible. In the cereal aisle, we want to choose cereals that are both low in sugar as well as high in fiber, if at all possible. Means that the Fruit Loops are out, I'm afraid, but something like Cashy Go Lean is a really flavorful, nutty kind of tasting cereal, which can really be satisfying. If you need a little bit of sweetness, a piece of fresh fruit cut up into small pieces can be a, a great addition. 
Other high fiber uh, cereals that are great additions even to add to your yogurt would be something like All Bran, Fiber One, and here's another variation on the All Bran theme. One of the biggest challenges behind cooking fish is that most people don't really know how to do it uh, in a flavorful way without adding a great deal of fat. So that's what we're going to do is a, a quick and dirty kind of fish recipe that you can put together when you get home from work and still be eating supper by 6 o'clock. We're going to add five ingredients to a marinade. Uh, we've got some fresh dill, uh, some fresh lemon juice, olive oil, about a teaspoon only, about two cloves of garlic, and then some fresh uh, black pepper. Now you can simplify this and use dry dill, use garlic powder, use lemon juice from the bottle that you have in your fridge. Then you've got a recipe that you can make really easily with what you have on hand. Don't have to run to the grocery store to get anything. We're going to use red snapper today um, just because it's a nice lean fish, really good flavor. So let's combine the ingredients together. We're going to put that dill in. I've used half of a lemon, the juice from half of a lemon. Like I said, about a teaspoon of olive oil. And then finally, about two cloves of garlic. I'm a big fan of cracked black pepper, so I'm going to use quite a few grinds. And then we'll just give this a quick stir. Now all we have left to do is to let it marinate for 30 minutes. So while you're changing into your comfy clothes after a day at work, the fish can just be um, becoming more flavorful in the marinade. Uh, after 30 minutes, you're going to just put it in a 425 degree oven for about 15 minutes or until it flakes easily, and then your fish is ready to go. We're done. We did it. We stocked our kitchen with healthy foods. Uh, we want to be able to do that consistently, so to do that we want to keep in mind the importance of planning your meals ahead of time. Take a look at your week, what your kids are involved in, what you might be doing with your friends, what your work challenges are going to be, and plan your meals accordingly. Uh, make a list. Stick to it to the best of your ability. Try not to go shopping on an empty stomach. We do end up buying more things um, that we wouldn't normally buy when we do go into the store hungry. Just like when we go to a restaurant hungry, uh, that's when we end up having an appetizer and dessert when we really don't need either. We want to choose foods that are low in fat, low in sugar, high in fiber, and ideally we're going to find those foods uh, in the outside perimeter of the store. So around the edges, that's where our vegetables and fruit tend to be, our whole grains tend to be, our lean meats, and our low-fat or non-fat dairy. Having a well-stocked, healthy kitchen will lead you down the right path towards healthy eating. Finally, we would like to really thank the Lakeshore Sobeys for allowing us to come into the store and do this tour. And I hope everybody takes away some tools that will help them in moving towards a healthier you.